Hi, and welcome to a, another podcast of mine that I'm doing, but this time I'm doing it solo because Sam doesn't want to fucking do it anymore. What the hell? I changed the name for you and everything, bitch. Oh, snap. She's not here to correct me, to say don't say that, don't be like that. Oh my god. Uh... It's just me right now. Frank and Thing Yaks. Solo. Solo. Yeah, because I'm by myself. Because it's just me here. Because there's no one else here. Get it? Solo? Like that movie with Han Solo? Because it was just him? Ah! Fuck you, Star Wars. How could you do this to me? I uh, got a Disney Plus recently. And I was watching the um, Mandalorian. And that was okay. And so I went to check out some other stuff. <laughs> Great, great, sweet, sweet, great. No, no, I went to, um, th they got different, they got all the Star Wars, fucking Disney has all the Star Wars, what the hell. So I went to watch the original Star Wars because I kept thinking to myself, what does Luke Skywalker do after he meets up with Han Solo? They take him straight to the Death Star? I know that's where they go next, but I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they go straight to the Death Star? First off, Luke has, like, no business doing that. And then I watched the original movie again, the first one. Well, I guess it's the fourth one. You know what I'm talking about, right? And I realized that, holy shit, it's because the Death Star had destroyed Alderaan, which that was their destination, and they get caught in the tractor beam. And they have to go there. Crazy. But also, after the movie was over, the original one, I was like, hey, you know what? That's not bad. That was okay. I remember watching that movie as a kid, like a young kid. Like, my niece now watches fucking that Trolls movie over and over and over, and at least once a day, maybe four times a day, depending on how it's going or whatever. I don't know, but as a kid, I was doing that with the fucking Star Wars movies, the three original ones. I had them on fucking VHS, and it'd be one after the other, over and over and over again. I also remember playing with the yo-yo while doing it. But then I was so... um. After that, I'm like, all right, I'll watch the uh, the newest one, the uh, the Skywalker one or whatever, because I remember I went to see, I went to theaters to watch it with some friends, and I'm like, I'm gonna watch this movie, and then we're gonna do a review on it. I never did a review on it, but I remember watching the movie and I started falling asleep, and I was like, Yo, what are we doing? What are we doing, Frank? Come on, this is Star Wars. We're here to watch the movie. Don't get sleepy. I'm like, fuck, I knew I shouldn't have had two beers and two shots of tequila. Fuck. But I made it through and I thought it was okay. So I went back and I went to watch it again for the first time in several months. And then I was like, oh. Maybe that's why I was falling asleep. Because it blows. It's not very good. What's this? What's it all about? It's so dumb. So dumb. Palpatine's back? Why? 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 And that scene where they pretend to kill Chewie? Come on! You think I bought for a second? Do you think there was a single second that I was like, oh no, you killed Chewbacca? No. No, there wasn't. Bullshit. Bullshit. And I hated the whole that they had to find a thing to find where more fucking... They had to find like a like a seeker, marker, stone. What was it? The fuck was the thing that he found that he could find Palpatine? And how does he have just a whole fleet of... Spaceships, Starcrafts, Star Destroyers, I don't know, a whole fleet? What are the, what's that crew doing? What are those crews doing? They've been just hiding out for like years? That seems like it could be a, like a, um, one of like the, those office like TV shows. Just that, just what the crew's doing while they're waiting to be deployed. They're just... They're just on the ships. They're just training and nothing's really happening. They just have to wait. They'd be waiting for years. They'd be waiting for years. I don't like it. And then the part where um, Palpatine shoots lightning into the sky. He just shoots lightning into the sky. Like a lot of lightning. Like, whoa. Oh, man. Crazy. I wish they would have fought him more. Could have been a cool robot battle thing where he's like still attached to the thing. Like he looked like a good supervillain, but they just they didn't they didn't use it very well. And then why do they kiss? I don't want to see him kiss. 
I didn't want to see that at all. She stabs him. She heals him. Now he's on her side. He's bad. He's good. He's good. He's bad. Then he dies. Then, wait. No, she dies. Then he brings her back, and then he dies. Oh, that's complicated. What? What? I say fail. Fail. Thumbs down. Not good. If you keep hearing a clicking sound, that's me pausing it so I don't have a bunch of fucking voided time with nothing going on because I'm by myself and I need to look through my notes. Uh, so I'm doing, doing, I don't know what I'm going to call this one. I want, I want another name. I need another name. I need another symbol. I need another fucking picture to use. What am I going to use? I don't know. What's the name going to be? Frank and Thing Yaks? The Yaks Podcast? Yaks? Yaks? Frank and Yaks? Franks? Duck Franks? Like I'm a dark lord fucking? No. Nope. Nope. I don't know. But, um, ah, fuck. What was my point? Oh, I remember. It was because um, doing the podcast at Sam and James' house is a lot easier than doing it at my house because I can go there and then they put the kid to sleep at like 9, 10 o'clock and then we go and we do this thing right here. I can't do that in my house because there's other people here and I can't just speak into a microphone like a fucking crazy person when I know other people might be listening. But it's fine as long as those other people are participating with... The thing. Speaking of crazy person, pe people, people. I've been watching just these offbeat YouTubers whose whole job on YouTube is to document other YouTubers who are fucking weird. Like there's this one guy. I don't know if you heard of him. His name's Jason Nova, Ninova, something like that. But he wants to be a bodybuilder. <clears throat> and he's a strange he's a strange dude. He seems like he's a little bit on the spectrum, so he's a little slow, but he's totally like convinced and committed. Not he's not committed, but he's convinced. Where he like he keeps telling everyone there's gonna be a bodybuilder. And then like they start filming it and putting it on his YouTube and because he's like he's got like more of a childlike attitude about it. Like he keeps saying like the right words and things, but he's not he doesn't follow through with anything. But then he's got like some real fucking bodybuilder people that are trying to help him. And he just can't get it. He can't get the concept down of how to lift the weights. And he can't do his diet right either. He keeps just eating ice cream and stuff. It's hilarious. And the the other part is that he, he's, he's won some competitions because in some of these bodybuilding competitions, like the smaller ones, I'm assuming, they have these random competitions. And sometimes not enough people enter. And so if two regular people enter... And he enters, he'll win third place by default just because there's no one else there. And that's like part of his whole strategy. It's more like he's pretending to be a bodybuilder. At some point, he did have a pretty good physique. I don't want to say it like that. But yeah, without a, a trainer constantly just on him all the time, he cannot stick with it because he's got a childlike personality. But it was really interesting. There's a couple other ones. There's this guy, and he goes by beige frequency. It was really entertaining stuff. Just the, like these offbeat, crazy people. And fucking, if I don't want them to do one on me. I don't think I'm quite crazy enough, but I'll work on that. <clears throat> so, um, going to circle back around to Disney movies. I was watching uh, Disney Plus, and I got this movie, Togo. It's about a dog sled team. They had to run to get medicine for some kids that were dying. You remember the movie Balto? This is what it's based off of. But apparently Balto wasn't the actual dog that did the, all the work. It was someone else. Oh, it was a different dog. Another example of the media lying to us about the facts. So the actual dog name was Togo. And he ran like 200 uh, something miles in the snow. And he met up at another place. And then the... Uh, like a relay race. There was another dog team ready to, you know, do the last 30 miles to the city for him. Which is like, yeah, you, you go the rest of the way. I'll catch up in a week. Because I'm exhausted from this 200 mile trek through the fucking snow. And then the, uh, then the, uh, so the, the dog sled team that finally made it to the city with the medicine only went like 30 miles. And their lead dog name was Fox. And the media wanted to write a thing. They're like, fuck. They can't call it Fox because they'll think it's a goddamn fox. What's the next dog's name? 
and the next dog's name was fucking Balto, and the paper's like, perfect, Balto's the hero, boom, newspapers, there's still a statue of it in New York City, or something, that's what I think they said, but the real dog's name was Togo, and after that, a bunch of people uh, went to go get Togo's, uh, I don't know, puppies and stuff, then then after that, his job was just to make some, uh, some, some breed, make some sled dogs, run some sled dogs, that could be fun, maybe. I like the cold and stuff. The other thing about this movie, I liked it, but the lead, the lead of this movie was William Defoe. God damn it! I don't know if he's a very good lead. That guy is terrifying. He can make a great villain, a great oddball, but as the lead in the Disney movie, it seems risky. He's, he's terrifying enough. To look at by himself. That's why he made a great Spider-Man villain. As the Goblin, perfect. As a lead hero, I, um, seems a bit sketchy. Oh wait, I was gonna look up some of his other movies. Boom. The other trait that I'm I know that he has is he dies a lot. Most of the movies, if William Defoe's in there, he's he's gonna fucking die. Wasn't he the the guy in that one? Was it Platoon? Or Apocalypse Now is like that that famous scene where the guy's like arms are in the air and he's just getting like shot the fuck up. Isn't that him? So the lighthouse, I didn't see it. Spider Man, that was a good one. Blah blah blah. Togo, Platoon. I think it was that one. I could be wrong. The Antichrist. He was in Aquaman. I didn't watch Aquaman. Boondock Saints, obviously. Yes, Boondock Saints. He made a good, he played a good detective there. The Last Temptation of Christ. Did he play Christ in something? Finding Nebo. What did he play in Finding Nebo? Oh, he was in John Wick. I remember he was in John... See, John Wick's a good example. You see William Dafoe, you're like, that guy's gonna die. And then he does. Death Note. Oh, see, that was a good character from the play. I'm not totally sure Death Note was a great movie. But William Dafoe played that, uh, the demon thing. The, um... I don't remember what it was called. Was it an Ugami? The Hunter, Motherless Brooklyn, hmm. Justice League. He was in Just No Way. Inside Man, John Car. All right. The uh, Daybreakers. He was in Daybreakers. That was an interesting movie. Vampires turning back to people. People turning to vampires. All right, let's move on. Oh, what happened? I took a coffee, but I got a coffee. I was thinking about uh, the other things I wanted to talk about, but I'm not going to be able to because Sam delayed my process of doing this. So now in internet years, about a, a, a thousand years have passed in internet years. So I don't know if I can talk about the Tiger King because I'm pretty over it myself. But I was going to... Um... Let's, let's go over the notes I had for the last one. This will be Frank and Sam's podcast number eight, Ignorance is Elegant. Sam, you don't need makeup. And then she was supposed to be like, oh, thank you, Frank. I'm like, you need plastic surgery. Boom. Eminem has a daughter, Haley. She's 24. She's dating a guy. The fuck is this guy? Is he out of his mind? This is, makes me laugh. That's crazy. Eminem will murder you, you know? He doesn't need a crew. I'm sure he'll go do it himself if you do anything wrong. You fucking psycho. Who are you dating? That's just Eminem's daughter. <laughs> fuck. What? Grandpa Slim Shady? What the fuck? Bro? That's just, that's super funny to me. It's so funny to me. And sketchy. It's like royalty. It's like he's dating royalty. He's dating Haley, the infamous Haley, who Eminem talks about. Fucking yo, that guy's dating royalty. If you mix Mountain Dew and Dr Pepper together, what do you call it? Is it Dr Dew or Mountain Pepper? You decide. Sam explains the tattoos. Oh, so I had these uh, tattoos in this gallery. There was one of a foot, and it was like a pineapple that looked like a skull. 
And there's this other one that was way more obscure that was supposed to make her react. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And be like, oh, God, why would someone do that? Right? That's my favorite part. That's the what I try to get her to do. It's funner when she reacts. Um, so the one was from an actual, like, a porn star. And she had a tattoo on her arm. And it was, the outside was a harp. And the inside was... It was it was all just black lines, but it was basically this girl getting peed and peed on in her mouth. Someone was peeing in her mouth. You could tell when you looked at it. From a distance, you'd be like, I can't tell what it is. But you get up close, you're like, oh my god, why, why, why? But I, I really like it. It was pretty sweet. Um, My Comic-Con pickup line. Do you like Star Wars? Because Yoda won from me? No. Too much? All right. Uh, how do you steal a coat? You jack it. Ha. Ha. Ha ha. Ha. I let my niece. I let my niece play Grand Theft Auto 5. That's okay, right? She kept wanting to play my Switch. And her favorite thing was to play. I had uh, Crash Bandicoot. The racing cart game thing. And she wanted to drive. And she, she was just getting wrecked. It wasn't doing very well. But I thought, hey, no, you can play this. This is alright. All she wants to do is drive the cars around. That's her favorite thing to do. But there is some swearing in there. Especially if you hit some guy and he's like, Ah, oh, fuck, what the hell is your problem? Oh shit, bro. So I turn the volume down a little bit. And I just kind of cringe and hope it goes over her head. It's fine as long as she doesn't hit anybody. Oh, God. Here's some older notes I had. I'm trying not to leave blood. But... Angels in the Outfield. Do you remember that movie? Is that a Disney movie? They were cheating so much. The Angels were just helping the baseball team cheat. That was their big plan. Why didn't they help the guy's dad get the their his life back together? But instead, no. They just spent their time helping a baseball team win a championship. That's crazy. What a fun concept. Hello, 90s. I have a kid's movie for you. Hey, do you know why no one in the Arctic are infected with viruses? Because they're isolated. <laughs> I'm hilarious. All right, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Ah! I've been, I've been pretty isolated myself. And uh, I haven't been doing good. I haven't been doing good. Um, isolation, historical involvement, habit, 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 involuntary mans. No, fucking incarceration. What do they put inmates in? Isolation, the shoe, the the um, fuck. Solitary confinement. Boom. Nailed it. That's what they are. I've been like voluntary, solitary confining myself. Not because I'm supposed to, because that's what I normally do. And when Sam and James don't let me come over, I go a little crazy and get a little paranoid. Just like the other day, I wasn't good because I bought, I had new hats. I was switching hats. I normally wear beanies. Now I'm down to snapbacks and I couldn't decide how, how fucking tight I wanted them. Do I want to I have three snaps or four snaps. How does it feel on my head? What is happening? Why can't I decide? And then I snapped them and then I unsnapped them and then I sat down and I went, you know what? This isn't right. And I got back up and I did it again and I kept putting my hats on and I couldn't fucking decide. I think I'm okay now, but it's like I have nothing important to focus on. So I just, I just get caught up. Just things get stuck in my head because I don't know why. It just happens because I haven't had much outside human contact. So my brain hasn't can produced, is it cortisol maybe? That makes everything better. It's something like that. Um, other thing right now is I'm drinking coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. It's, it's only in the afternoon. It's the afternoon time. I'm by myself finally. And I'm like, oh, I gotta record. Boom, what? No one's coming back for an hour or so. Hit it up. I gotta hit it up. When I go to Sam and James' house, though, I'm always drinking. I'll start off. I, we, we don't, where would we record? Like an hour? In an hour? I get fucking sloshed in that hour. 
because I sit there and I pour tequila or whatever, and I sip it so ga- I sip it quicker than normal, and I don't know. It's something with the people around, and I'm a little nervous, maybe, and I'm sipping and sipping before I know it. I'm like six shots deep within an hour, which is too many, and I'm already out of my mind, and I can't focus or think clearly. So it's better that I'm just doing coffee right now. And things to do later. Maybe. Ooh, what other shows do you love? Right? Fucking Master Chef. Do you watch Master Chef? That show is great. Uh, welcome to Master Chef. Last time on Master Chef. I've been just binge watching Master Chef. I don't know if it's season two or season three, but the last two contestants it came down to is like the seven foot tall black guy and this blind Chinese lady. And the Chinese lady won. Which is funny for me. It's so funny. Ha, she knows how to cook better because she could taste things. That's the idea. They're like, taste everything, taste everything, taste everything. And that's all she can do. She can't see anything, so she's like, it's got to taste good. If it doesn't taste good, I'm fucked up because I can't see. Can't see shit. I'm blind. She had a helper, though. The helper wasn't allowed to cook for her, though, but she could help him. Be like, this is here, this is there, that, that, that. Like, they got mystery boxes, and they open them up, and she's like, what's in my fucking box? There was one time they gave her a live crab to cook with, too, which is pretty funny in itself. She also had to do a sea urchin. She had to, she had to clean out a sea urchin. These things are pokey. They got spikes all over them, and then you have to, like, snip it open and then dig out the meat, which looks absolutely disgusting. Don't ever serve me that. Sea urchin meat. Gross. Who was like, look at this delicacy. This is weird fucking rich people that are like, is it? Hard to come by? Yeah. Does it look disgusting? Yeah. I'll pay you $10,000 for that. I don't know what the price is, but like sushi and sea urchin and uh, fish eggs. That What is that called? What is that called? What is it called? Uh-oh. Caviar. Got there. I had to look it up. Caviar. Gross. I don't want any of that. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, so MasterChef, like, um, I get into a kick where I'm like, this show is amazing. I love it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Your rice is raw. What are you doing? God, pay attention. How do you have raw rice? How are you going to serve these judges raw rice? They take their time to come here, taste your food, and you got to give them crap. The fuck is wrong with you? It looks like a dog's dinner. You know, Ramsey has a lot of different uh, uh, fucking insults, which is great. And then there's Joe Bastiana. I think that's his name. I might have fucked that up completely. But he, I like how he's, in every, in every other episode, he's like, he just like, he tastes things. Like, does this taste good? Is that what you wanted? And then he just stares at him, doesn't say shit. I'm like, hell yeah, Joe. You do your thing. Or, or there's be episodes when they, when they taste the meal. I'm like, this is absolutely disgusting. I hate this. One of the things he loves to do is just, he grabs the plate and he takes it over and he throws it in the trash. Like, ah, we're not playing around. Not in this level of the competition. You give us good food and you get the fuck out. You get the fuck out. You get the hell out of here. God damn. Yeah. But that's great. What, what, what else did... Oh, yeah. Then Sometimes things catch on fire. It's a kitchen, right? And then they make... I don't know. The editing might reveal something different. But they make Gordon Ramsay look so valiant. There's like fire. And then he gets in there right away. Every time. He's like, what's going on? Stand back. I got this. He's like a knight. A white knight. When it comes to things like that. He's just on top of it. She's like, I'm the master. I got this. Get the fuck out of the way. I don't want you to burn the studio down. But that's the other thing that the reality shows. They really try to hype up the fucking, the fucking drama. Oh no, it's raw. Oh no, this is happening. And then they'll go to a commercial and they'll come back and they'll be like, just add more pepper. And they're like, oh, it's all good. And they're like, whoa, they really made it seem like there was a big deal and they don't know what they were going to do to solve this problem. And then they come back. Now they go to the commercial, you know, they hype up the thing, and like, oh my god, this tastes bland and awful, and you made it all like this, what are we gonna do? And then it was like, oh no, we fucked up the fish, and then they come back, and then they repeat the same, like, ten seconds over again, where they're like, oh no, we fucked up the fish, ah, oh, it's bland in the seasoning, and then they're just like, ah, oh, just add more seasoning, and then, you know, whip it together and get it back, and then they're like, yeah, we'll just do that. 
and then they move on from there. It's like they they build this thing up, and then it's like, it's fine. I, I don't know. That's just real. That's the thing that annoys me about reality shows. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you have any fucking idea? What was I getting to? That that how come there's no? I want to see behind the scenes stuff. How come I don't have no behind the scenes stuff? I want testimonials of people like how the set actually was. How was it actually? Um, what else about Master Chef? Oh, in this reality competitions, not just Master Chef, but all the reality competitions, people just gravitate straight towards the phrase "throwing under the bus." He threw me under the bus. I can't believe you guys are throwing me under the bus. I'm gonna throw him under the bus. I don't know. They just love this phrase. They love it. They use it at least twice an episode. People you love using that phrase. I can't believe you're gonna throw me under the bus like this, man. I can't believe they threw me under the bus. I'm gonna throw people under the bus, man. I'm the fucking bus driver. Ugh. The the other thing, there was this um, there was this fat guy. He had sausage fingers, and uh, they were all like, they were trying to make some sort of dainty pasta thing, and they're like, I don't know how, what's his name's gonna do with those sausage fingers, and then even he did it. He's like, I don't know, it's hard for me to roll this dainty pasta with my sausage fingers. Like Jesus, bro, and then everyone kept making tell him he had fat fingers, and then he did a good job, and still, still Joe was like, how do those fat fingers make such pretty? tortellinis and he's like I don't know bro and it was just so like god give the guy a break bro he did a good job yet you're still giving him shit about his weight not cool what else oh they had an egg boiling competition not, not an egg boiling but they had to do eggs like three or four different ways fried poached scrambled omelet Soft boiled, soft boiled. I don't get who the fuck is eating a soft boiled egg. What kind of psycho soft boils an egg and then they they soft boil it and they serve it on a little thing and then they open up, they open it up with like a fork. They just like and so they take the top off and there's still a shell. Then they like scoop out the inside and eat it. Soft boiled egg. Who's doing that? Whoever does that, that looks no, no, no. And you, how easy would just like a piece of shell to fall in there and eat it? That just makes me feel uncomfortable. Eating eggshells is, is a real turn off to me. No eggshells. I don't like eggshells. I don't want them. Get them away from me. Uh, the, the, um, so in the competition, they give them a lot of different chances to... Uh, There'll be like a mystery box, or a or a or they'll cook in a in a um. They have like street vendors, and people will vote for their best team one, team two, and the losing team has to go to the pressure pressure test. So during the pressure test, sometimes they give the uh, team leader the uh, the chance. He's like, you can save one person from your team from going to the pressure test, and you can save yourself. Who is it? And sometimes they'd be like, no, I'll cook. Save him. Fuck that. Always save yourself. Always save the so if some if you can save yourself in a competition, always choose to save yourself. No matter what. Who cares? You're trying to win. Money. Fuck that. That's how you play that game. Just like if you help someone move and then go out to dinner, always let them pay. Ugh. I helped my uncle move one time. And then after that we went to somewhere to get something to eat, and then I offered to pay for some reason in this strange exchange when I thought I was being more helpful or something. I don't know. He's like, he's got like maybe some gambling problems and I thought maybe I'll just help him pay. But it still seemed weird and awkward. I should have made that fucker pay. That was the point. He should have done it. I don't know why I didn't do it. And I think about it and it makes me cringe because it was kind of an awkward thing that I think I did. Oh, also, if at a restaurant and the waiter sucks, don't tip them. Just don't tip them. Like, you suck, no tip. There was this one time this waiter I had sucked so bad. 
He was so bad. I was angry. Like, he didn't bring me napkins. He didn't even really come back. And he rushed me. And what the fuck's his problem? Like, and then I was like, oh, I'll get him back. Not like he gave a fuck about me anyways. But I'm like, I'll give him back. I'll just give him a huge tip. That'll show him. I'm like, what? No. No. What is my mindset? Because I want to win over. Because I think he's I think he's winning. He's trying to beat me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. I'll give you a bigger tip. Fuck you. Because I can afford it. You piece of shit waiter. Jeff. Fuck you. Goddamn motherfucker. I still tipped him like a regular amount, but I wish I did. I shouldn't have. Should have gave him no tip. No tip. Dick. Brought it on himself. Um. Machiano cherries. Is that how you pronounce it? Macchiano cherries suck. Do you know? Do you know what cherries I'm talking about? Those bright ass red ones. They suck. They come in a can sometimes, or a jar, a clear jar. They would come in, and you could eat them out. They suck. They're just. They taste like an artificial cherry soaking in a sugar water with red food dye. That's all they are. They are an imitation cherry. They're not real, and no one actually likes them. And I don't know why people aren't out here just like admitting it. So yeah, the only time anyone likes those cherries is when you sit there and you're like, God, I don't like these cherries. And then they're like, what? These cherries are my favorite. They're so good. And then they eat like two of them and then they never eat them again until the next time someone's like, I hate these cherries. And they're like, what? These cherries are amazing. They're so good. What's your problem? Um, that's all right. That's the whole thing. That's my time right now. I've been interrupted, so I have to end it. And, um. I might add some, we'll see what happens. All right, cool.